Less than 24 hours to go until that deadline. Leaders in the Senate agreeing not only to keep the lights on for now, but to try to avoid this issue in the near future. The Senate expected to vote today, but the question right now, will the House buy it? This morning, Congress staring at a midnight deadline to pass a spending deal to avoid a government shutdown for the second time in as many months. But on Capitol Hill, a bipartisan budget breakthrough could end the cycle of crises through 2019. This bill represents a significant bipartisan step forward. We have reached the budget deal that neither side loves, but both sides can be proud of. That's compromise. That's governing. The Senate deal would add hundreds of billions of dollars in military and domestic spending over the next two years, ending severe cuts known as the sequester. It also funds disaster relief for areas devastated by last year's hurricanes and wildfires and extends the Children's Health Insurance Program for another four years through 2028. President Trump, just a day after threatening a shutdown if he didn't get his way on immigration, not addressed in this deal, now touting the agreement, tweeting, Republicans and Democrats must support our troops and support this bill. But not everyone's satisfied. The House's top Democrat, Nancy Pelosi, delivering her message in a marathon eight-hour floor speech, the longest in more than a century. I had no intention of yielding back, Mr. Speaker. I Pelosi insisting she won't support the deal without a debate about extending protections for younger, undocumented immigrants, known as dreamers. Our dreamers hang in limbo with a cruel cloud of fear and uncertainty above them. Conservatives upset, too. I, I just think it's a bad deal. One Republican blasting the spending proposal as disgusting and reckless. Fiscal insanity, he writes. Outside that deal, another government cost being questioned, the president's proposal for a military parade, with the Pentagon now making preliminary plans. The president's uh, respect, his, uh, his fondness for the military, I think is reflected in him asking for these options. Critics quick to pounce. We're not North Korea. We're not Russia. We're not China. And I don't want to be. Meanwhile, President Trump seizing on hundreds of pages of newly revealed text messages, most from 2016, exchanged by a pair of FBI officials in a romantic relationship. Bombshells, the president calls them, including one with an apparent reference to President Obama that reads, POTUS wants to know everything we're doing. But critics caution the context is unclear, and there's no evidence of any wrongdoing. Also this morning, former President George W. Bush said there's pretty clear evidence that the Russians meddled in the 2016 election. The former president was speaking at a summit in the United Arab Emirates. He didn't mention President Trump by name, but he did warn against trying to improve relations with Russia. Savannah and Hoda. All right, Peter Alexander, right outside the West Wing door. Thank you. We Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.